good night, my children. Let us check in on Jack Russell, the werewolf by night, and see how he is doing now that he possesses the dark hole. The answer is not great. It's another month and another full moon, so he has become the werewolf yet again. However, for these past few nights, he has been pursued by people intent on capturing the beast. It seems to be the police who are so determined on obtaining the monstrous being, but soon a helicopter comes to drop a net on the werewolf, his only chance being to leap into the water at a pier to escape it. However, there is no respite in the seawater, for while this hunter may be the best at his job in the forest, this is the domain of sharks, one of which wants to make the werewolf its dinner. With so many shark movies out there, why has nobody made werewolf versus shark? Fortunately, our hero is able to subdue his aquatic attacker, but winds up back on a beach as the night ends, transforming back into his human form. He's been staying with journalist Buck Cowan for a while, and they've recruited Jack's girlfriend, Terry, to help translate the Darkhold. Unfortunately, she's not had much luck, and they realize they can recruit some local help for the job. Father Yokez, a former university professor who now helps rally workers against businesses oppressing them. Buck had done a feature on the professor once, so that's their in to talk to him about it. He is indeed interested in translating it, our heroes letting him borrow the book to work on it. Several weeks pass, but let's forget about our little MacGuffin for now. Instead, Buck confides in Jack that he can sense that something is wrong, and that his feelings are connected to the coming full moon. While Jack is happy to reaffirm his friendship and thanks for his help, he says that there are some things he cannot reveal to his friend. Because why would you want to warn the people you care about? that your lycanthropy might be a problem, right? They are visited by a large man named Cephalos, who reveals that he was the one flying the helicopter that had been chasing Jack some time ago. He goes with them and we learn Cephalos's story. Cephalos was once a little person and a genius. However, his colleagues were prejudiced and abusive towards him, so he undertook an experiment to change his body shape. It worked, making him tall and muscular, but the side effects took hold. He's slowly dying, which I personally see as an upside, but I'm kind of biased here. His body requiring more energy than he can normally provide. Except in one way, using a machine to transfer it from one living being to the next. He plans to steal the voracious energy of Jack's werewolf form, choosing to do so for his first transformation of the month. The procedure starts to work, but as Jack transforms, he breaks free and attacks Cephalos' assistant, Lewis. Lewis, being a random citizen who can kick a werewolf's ass, is able to fight him off for a bit. Cephalos, empowered by the werewolf energy, breaks free of his own tube and knocks Jack out with his new strength. He plans to resume the transfer later, but in time the werewolf awakens while Cephalos is boarding his helicopter, the beast attacking as it takes off. The struggle brings the helicopter to the Hollywood sign where it crashes, and of course the werewolf easily survives. Jack does wonder though, if it's the werewolf that wanted Cephalos dead, or himself. Or both! Both is good. Did Cephalos survive the crash? Will Father Yokez be able to translate the Dark Holm? Well, we'll certainly find out in another issue of Werewolf by Night. <laughs>